Why do you think that conversations around tourism and authenticity always come back to food? It seems to me they often do. What is it about food, do you think, or the production of food, or the nature of agriculture, or the history of agriculture, which seems to lend itself so well to a um, to exposing relationships that local people have with their landscapes and with their history and the traditions and ways of life? It seems it seems very fertile territory. Food has the massive advantage that you sit down and eat it with other people, you talk about it, mm. and it touches four or five of the senses mm. at the same time. So it's a very rich experience. And the authenticity, I mean, the extraordinary thing in Britain, the growth of, of local cheeses. If you think back, Justin, to when you and I mm. were younger. It was cheddar or it, it was cheddar and maybe Wednesday down if you got lucky. Mm. Um, and if you lived in an obscure part of Lancashire, you might find Lancashire. No, we've probably got more cheeses than the French. And those are newly created. Mm. I mean, the Fabsham Food Festival that we run, lots of their traditional foods, which weren't there five years ago, but people don't realise how new they are. They've become well established. I think there's a lot of different facets there that if we understood them about what food brings to authenticity, that could be really useful in the tourism industry. I think particularly that notion of bringing landscape to life, because we tend to think of authentic experiences with local people, and they can often be. But um, you know, if you sit in Spitsbergen in solitude looking at the view, I mean, that feels very alive, very authentic, very real. So it's, I think, relationship with landscape as well as the relationship with people that is... And, the, and there are companies who bring the two together, aren't there? Yeah. I mean, Village Ways, for example, with its notion of enabling poor people to walk with a guide through a landscape from village to village. So you have the social interaction with yeah. the guide and the people you meet along the way, but you're also experiencing the food, the agricultural systems, the social structures, yeah. at a leisurely pace by walking through it. And that's very different from trekking, where the purpose is to get from point A to point B, yeah. often as quickly as possible, and often without stopping to yeah. look at the view. Yeah, it's interesting in Kenya, people um, visit to see the lion, um, when they come back, they're talking not just about the Maasai, which becomes more interesting than the lion, but the relationship of the Maasai with the land. Yes. And with the cattle and with the land, and with the wildlife and the land. So landscape comes to life through its relationship with you know, people. When, when I did that first research in Zimbabwe, I talked to um, the head of geography at Zimbabwe University and was talking to her about the fact that I thought that what really turned people on about Africa was people. Mm. And she was very, very sceptical. but. Uh, a couple of months later, she got invited to the farewell um, cocktail party from a group from the Smithsonian. Mm. And like a good academic, she worked the room, went round, and asked people what their most memorable experience mm. was. And in about 80% of the cases, apparently, it was the visit to the school in Wangi mm. and one particular yeah. experience of, of talking with a child. Yeah. And that, I think, is, is so often people's experience. Yeah. What was the most memorable thing? Yeah. It was an encounter.